traditional flow cytometers um, are extremely large. Uh, there had always been a sacrifice that if you wanted more uh, functionality, the, the instrument had to get extremely large. So I mentioned last night, before we ever even went and, and started to design the acoustic device into this, we did anthropological studies to, to look at people using the instruments, ask them what worked and what didn't work for them. So as I mentioned last night, we did a lot to make sure that the footprint is very small. As you can see, it's about the size of a large microwave oven, but it's still full functional. The other thing is that it will fit into a tissue culture hood, so that if anybody's doing work with infectious agents, etc., um, they can be protected inside that environment. It's really very few cytometers where you can do that, especially with this capability. So, in general, a flow cytometer is doing something very interesting. It's taking cells, and think of the dimensions here, passing them through a tube that's about the width of three human hairs, and it needs to focus those cells very much in the center and a cell is maybe one-tenth the width of a human hair. And so that's happening in an area here where the cells are actually moving with the help of a fluid through this tube. The fluids come in from one of these containers. They mix. They get focused in this compartment down here that you can't see. And as they come up this way and ultimately exit via this little loop right here, the lasers are trained and focused on that point where they come up. So as the cells come up, the two lasers are focused on that stream. Now when they come up, the instrument is able to, to differentiate the cells based upon how they scatter light. Think of them as like little disco balls, right? They're going to shoot light in all directions. The bigger they are, the more light they reflect. So in some very gross ways, the instrument first can separate major populations based upon how they scatter light. Now, if you have some of our reagents on them with fluorescence and fluorescent molecules, that light is also collected. It's focused this way. And what's not shown underneath here is a series of mirrors. You can see them here. Now, they have different colors because they're capable of sending different wavelengths of light into different detectors. And in that way, you're able to separate all of the light that comes off the cell into its individual components. And that's what you're looking at here. These filters allow you to send different wavelengths of light into different detectors. And in that way, you can get a very large amount of information from a very large number of cells in a relatively short period of time. So in contrast uh, to looking at a microscope where you're moving the stage around and looking at cells individually using your eye, this does it at a rate of maybe 10,000 cells a second. And that information, rather than being visual in your head per se, is going into these detectors and ultimately into a computer where it's, uh, what's the word, it's disassembled and, and reassembled in a way that works for people um, statistically. We wanted to make sure that people had access to some areas of the instrument where, just because of the nature of some of these, uh, these components, replacements, um, new, new things that need to be put in here, this window makes things very accessible, so those things that can be changed out very easily. So the instrument was first built ergonomically with everybody's needs in mind, and then we put this wonderful uh, differentiating uh, technology and the acoustics inside of it. I think it's rare in, in a, an instrument of this size uh, and, and value uh, to find some of the special little features that we have, the ability to change these filters and, of course, store them in the instrument as well. People can use different uh, filters to look at different fluorochromes. What's unique about our instrument is that uh, it's very common for uh, flow cytometers to have fixed um, uh, filters in them and so we're kind of unique in that way that we give customers a lot of flexibility in what they can do with this instrument beyond its standard setup. There's another thing I just noticed is that um, you really can't put things in backwards because everything's keyed to go in the right way. So um, the data um, is, is coming into photomultiplier tubes that are uh, housed inside of this anodized aluminum block. Then it goes to the data acquisition boards, and that all ultimately comes out the back of the instrument um, through a USB port going into a, a nice dual-core computer that will also be supplied with the instrument. Our ideal ultimately had been to make this um, so user-friendly that it's, it's almost at the point where, think of the analogy to the copier world, when they went from the, the big copy centers because things were so big, to the smaller copiers that you could buy for your home use and pull the foam cores off the side and set it down and get going. We're, we think we're pretty much there, other than wanting to make sure that people um, get the full value of what they've purchased. So this will be a field installed uh, you know, by one of our representatives' instrument. We're looking at um, taking orders in Q1, uh, middle to late Q1 of next year, with shipments at the beginning of Q2.